I am back. Um, this is more of a consultation more than it is, you know, I'm not, I'm not doing this job. I don't have the time right now to do this job, but I'm going to refer it out. But I wanted to put eyes on it because when the homeowner told me what had happened, this, by the way, this is a vacant house. So it's being flipped in order to, to sell it. And the homeowner has had it for quite some time, but he decided to go through the process of, you know, like updating everything. And so tile choice aside, tile choice aside, um, this guy had no business buying tile, let alone setting it. Um, he just messed up in so many ways. And, and there is a, the, so I, I need to preface a little bit. When I do these bad tile shower, sometimes they're shower, sometimes a tile job. Sometimes people will comment, well, it was a homeowner that did it, or, you know, this is a, some guy on Craigslist or this or that or whatever. They didn't pay enough. That's usually, they didn't, when they don't pay enough, when the homeowner doesn't pay enough, yeah, they're going to get a shoddy job. And I always forewarn people, don't, don't go at the lowest bid. But I've seen shoddy jobs that were at very high bids also. Mm, there's a lot of things, there's a lot of things to unpack. The least of which is I've never ever seen, well, maybe I have, maybe before I got into tile when I would see something like this. Because I remember seeing this kind of like a round towel bar situation where tile, not this type of tile, but a smaller 4x4 was wrapped around a towel bar and kind of recessed out and all that stuff. But to have a towel bar inside of a shower in the front is kind of weird. And then what's weirder is these cuts that were totally unnecessary, except that he wasn't a tile guy. Um, but the weirdest thing is that he wasn't comfortable, look at this, he wasn't comfortable, comfortable enough um, to actually do tile. So he tiled over tile. And it's really hard to see because he goobered this up with a bunch of paint or grout or something like that. But this is the original tile right here. And then somehow or another, he made it possible to tile over tile. I don't know how he made that happen because obviously there's a certain product that you would use to, um, to enhance the grip and all that stuff. It's actually called Prim Grip. And I doubt very much if he used that. My best guess is this is probably just caulked on some type of construction adhesive or something like that. Um, just because of everything else that I see tells me that he, if he's not comfortable, if he's going to do shoddy work like this, then no doubt he did shoddy work on the install of this tile. The fact that I can even pull on it right now tells me a lot. So yeah, I'm, I'm, he probably spot bonded with some caulking or something like that. So now I've prefaced everything and I've gone through a little bit. There's not a lot to unpack anymore, right? So the homeowner actually spent a, a, a decent amount of money to have this done, right? Without any of this material, which isn't a whole lot anyway, because you're looking at tile and a couple of tubes of caulking <laughs> that he probably used. Didn't even change out the shower valve, right? So just take that labor out. Did not set the tub, take that labor out, right? And he was charged about $1,500, which is an extremely fair price. It would be hard to believe unless you're just really, really busy that a normal tile guy would not do this job for $1,500. This is a three-day job. At best, it's a three-day job. Once you take out the original wall, cut that out, pull out all the wall, put up new wall board, waterproof it, put in a shower valve all the same day, right? Then you could be tiling the next day. And even if you needed a third day, $1,500 is a very, very fair price. So the fact that a lot of people talk about, you know, they didn't pay enough isn't always the case. Hmm, how would I, uh, how do you vet a tiler? How do you make sure that you're not going to get ripped off? Because you can't go by pictures. Although arguably, if he'd taken pictures of this work and showed it to somebody else, it wouldn't pass the muster. So I don't, I don't, I don't know. Whoops. Because I've been asked a question before, how do you vet somebody like that? My best take on it is one, find a tile guy from a standalone tile store, right? Go back to, you know, the stock area where you're picking up material. The guy behind the counter is going to know definitively who does tile and who does showers, right? Because it's not the same. A tile guy who does floors and backsplashes is not the same tile guy you want necessarily building a shower. And I'm going to get to the shower because this is a tub shower combo in just a minute. And he messed up over there too. 
My best advice, if you can't go to standalone tile place, is to get everything in writing. When I fill out a contract, there's pr I, I, I write like I talk. It's just a lot of information, sometimes unnecessary, but it's unambiguous. When I write on my contract, I'm going to be setting tile. I'm going to talk about the spacing. I'm going to talk about the grout. I'm going to be talking about the shower valve. I'm going to be talking about towel bars if I'm putting them in there, what kind I'm putting in and at what point and all this stuff. So yeah, look at your contract. That's the best advice I can give you to find somebody that will do what you want done that's unambiguous. And now I'm going to move on to the other shower. All right, here we are on the other shower. Uh, the floor he did do. Um, there's a couple issues with the floor. There's a little bit of a little bit of movement going on with the floor. A little bit of squishing going on, which is a little bit odd. So the other floor was a floated floor because I pulled up the floor bin and I could see there was wire mesh and there was probably an inch and a half of you know concrete mortar mix up under there. And then there was tile on top of that. And then yes, he tiled on top of that floor as well, as well as the walls. So that floor is very stable and rigid and solid, but this isn't, which is a little bit odd because right here we have another floor bin. And if you look in there, we have two layers of at least three quarter or five eighths plywood that was put on here prior to any floor work. But then there's almost two inches right above that second layer of plywood of something or another, I don't know. Anyway, he definitively tiled on top of tile because he did the same thing here. He put quarter round in order to hide whatever was below that, which is tile, and then whatever is below that, which is already, um, you know, a little step up going on. Now he's got a greater one. So all that floor has to be taken out and more than likely mm, relatively easily because you know it wasn't done right and again i don't know what he used to adhere these tiles to the floor whatever it was or whatever the prep was wasn't done right but here's the biggest issue and the biggest problem because this shower is um uh, pretty much like the other one without the top towel bar in the front um don't know why the trim is black but um you know cutting around <laughs> and not even a good cut you can see you overcut on a couple places but cutting around something rather than setting that after the fact right that would be the way to go and not bury them inside of the wall but then again they were attached to the original wall which the original wall stayed and so did the original towel bar so all he did is retroactively put his tile on top of it and cut around and all that stuff so it's almost like he didn't have a choice. Look at that huge, humongous grout line in the back that's not even in, in any way. And the odd thing is that he's got double cuts, so he's got a cut over here and a cut over here, which is totally unnecessary had he just started at full tile. This is the simplicity of some of this, and I'm horrible at math, but the math is really easy here. Why have two separate cuts? You know, like just, yeah. I mean, it's pretty obvious. You have full two tile, and then instead of a three inch and a three inch, you end up with a six inch piece over here, or whatever the case is. Um, it's hard to, it's hard to um, throw some of my critique out there as I normally do with some people who can sort of do tile, but this guy couldn't at all. Like, again, same shower valve that was in here originally, which is probably as old as I am. Um, no reason to have it in there. I would always, always recommend getting rid of the double handle fixtures and putting in a single handle, you know, newer valve. But that being said, he couldn't even do the cuts right. In fact, that looks like it was nippers. It was uh, some type of cutter first, and then he kind of nipped around it. Um, and and again, I don't. So some of this, the the symmetry kind of yells out at me, right? And so that's why it kind of gets me. You have this half a tile that just stops at the top, right? Where, why, you know, when you can just go up past the shower head, unless he couldn't figure out how to make a hole for the shower head, kind of in the same light that he did here. Um, but it's definitively tile on top of tile, which is not working. And it's tile on top of tile here too. And of course the curb is flat <laughs> and factory edges showing and all the other stuff that I usually critique on. And then, uh, this quarter round 
to hide um, all the garbage that he tiled around. You know, just quarter round, quarter round, quarter round everywhere. And, you know, quarter round is normally used as a technique to hide cuts up to a wall or something, but not to hide, you know, your total screw up. And then of course, last but not least, a large format tile in a shower, which can be done, but not like this. Um, it can be done either using like 45 cuts on the tile with the drain in the center, which is not. Um, it can be done that way. It can be done with a linear drain down at the end or down at the end down here, I suppose. Um, in other countries that I've been to, I see large format tile, 12 by 24, used on a shower all the time. But with a linear drain, that's how you make it happen. It's really hard to get a center drain with a large format tile unless you make appropriate cuts and get everything symmetrical. Other than that, it's a great job. <laughs> other than that, other than all of this stuff, uh, yeah, like I said in the beginning, this guy had no business buying tile, let alone touching it. Is that a crack? No, that's a pencil mark. Um, so again, uh, the homeowner wasn't able to remember what he spent on this, but but with the floor inclusive to the shower and all that stuff, he spent a whole lot more than he did in the, in the other bathroom. And it's a shame, because it's probably pushing four or five grand, my best guess. Mm, maybe not quite that. He didn't get He didn't get the lowest price, which is good, but he got the lowest price result. And he didn't get the highest price, which is not necessarily good, but here's the thing, you know, you end up spending twice if you go if you go with somebody that you don't know their skill ability, right? Let's say that that other bathroom is 1500 and let's say he he chose to charge 2500 or 3000 on this So you're already into four or five grand now you got to spend another four or five grand to have it done, right? So you're doing something that is twice the price of what it needs to be, you know, like Yes, there are places in California, New York, you know, larger cities where, you know, 10 grand for two, two um, jobs like this would not be out of the norm. But here in the South, 10 grand is pretty much a one full master bathroom job, you know, not two separate ones like this. So I don't know. I try and put information out there for people to decipher whether they're going to do a project themselves or hire somebody to do a project either which way know what you know before you don't know what you don't know because this guy didn't know he wasn't here during the process that guy jumped from that job over to here probably in the same week because that other job didn't take but you know a day um it's just a shame i hate to see I hate to see people waste money. Hey, if you enjoyed that video and you learned something, consider being a Patreon member. Five, ten, fifteen dollars a month would help me greatly produce more videos. I make nothing up from YouTube at all. If you're gonna call me for advice, please donate fifty dollars for thirty minutes. My link to my PayPal and my Patreon account is down below. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so you get immediate notifications as soon as I post a video. And thank you very much for your support.